become very, very rich. And nobody is going to tell you that because nobody wants to kill the goose that lays the golden eggs. Your skin is well equipped, like the whole body is well equipped to exist and survive and, and thrive in an environment, whether that environment is, is dry or whether that environment is humid. When it's dry, you just make more moisture factors. That's what's supposed to happen if you're healthy. You make more moisture proteins, which trap water, more moisture sugars, which trap water, more moisture lipids or fats, which trap water. That does not happen when you coat your skin with your oil of Olay or Nivea or Estee Lauder or whatever moisturizer you decide to use. So not only are you not doing anything to moisturize your skin, you're actually shutting down moisture factors, making your skin more dry, guaranteeing you're going to be addicted to your moisturizer. So the second thing we're looking for is skin softness. The third thing is the color and the tone of the skin. A healthy skin tone is even, doesn't have any blotches, certainly no significant dark blotches like melasma, and it doesn't have any redness, and it doesn't have any signs of non-uniformity. It's uniform. And luckily, because pigmentation is tightly reg uh, regulated, that doesn't, hyperpigmentation doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen until we get older. It doesn't happen until we get sicker and more degenerated. From a topical perspective, there is a lot of things that we can do to keep the skin pigment even. We talked about some toxic things. Hydroquinone is the classic drug for lightening the skin, and there's derivatives of hydroquinone, but there's also nutritional strategies, topical nutritional strategies, and my favorite topical skin lightener is vitamin C. Vitamin C is an unbelievably important topical ingredient. I hope I'm not boring anybody with all this talk about vitamin C for the skin, but you can't talk about healthy skin without talking about topical vitamin C. There's not a lot of things you can put on top of your skin that are going to make much of a difference, but vitamin C is one of them. Vitamin C is one of the major, it may be, well, it, it's probably the second most important thing for the skin. Vitamin A is probably the first, but it's right up there. Vitamin C does all kinds of things for the skin, but in terms of pigment, it blocks the enzyme that's involved in hyper too much pigment, hyperpigmentation. It's called tyrosinase. We've talked about this before. By inhibiting the enzyme, by inhibiting this pigment enzyme, we inhibit pigmentation and darkening of the skin. And this is how all skin lighteners, the vast majority of skin lighteners work. They're said to be tyrosinase inhibitors. And if you're in the skincare business, if you're an esthetician, I know we have a lot of esthetician and esthetician students listening to this program, you all heard of tyrosinase inhibitors. It's the main way that uh, skin lightening is, is accomplished from a topical means, tyrosinase. Tyrosine is a amino acid that gets converted into pigment through a couple of steps. And tyrosinase, whenever you hear ACE, A-S-E, you're talking about an enzyme. Tyrosinase turns tyrosine into pigment. By blocking that enzyme, pigment, pigmentation can be blocked. And vitamin C is ridiculously effective. The coolest thing about using vitamin C to even your skin tone is in addition to being a tyrosinase inhibitor, you get multiple benefits. You get great benefits, lots of benefits. You get anti-aging benefits. You get sun protection benefits. You get wrinkle, uh, anti-wrinkle benefits. It stimulates the production of connective tissue fibers. Vitamin C topically even upregulates or turns on or stimulates moisture factors. The exact opposite of what happens when you use a standard wax oil moisturizing cream. All right. We're going to take a break and come back. Have a few more things to say about the skin. Then we'll get your phone calls. 844-236-6010. back on the bright side. That line's open for you, 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, we'll get you just a moment. I want to say a couple more things about vitamin C. Tomorrow, we'll, uh, on our next bright side episode, we'll talk about uh, some of the really interesting, one of the really interesting things about vitamin C is human beings and guinea pigs and a couple of species of ape and the fruit bat are the only animals that don't make vitamin C. Other animals make their own vitamin C. It's not a vitamin. It's an essential chemical. It's a, a biochemical in the sense that they make it. But here's the really cool thing about vitamin C. The more an animal is under stress, the more vitamin C it makes. Vitamin C is the quintessential anti-stress vitamin. This is why it's so important for pigmentation. Pigmentation is a stress response. Vitamin C is a stress management nutrient. And so by using vitamin C topically, as well as internally, 
You can help support your body's anti-stress system, your stress management system, and get all the benefits associated with stress management, including anti-pigment or anti-hyperpigmentation benefits. Vitamin C is also a moisturizer, a real moisturizer, a true moisturizer in the sense that it upregulates skin moisture factors. It turns on the production of skin moisture factors. Unlike moisturizing creams, which shut them down, vitamin C turns them on. This is why I developed my truth treatment products, so you guys could get the benefits of vitamin C. There's different kinds of vitamin C. Sometimes you'll see vitamin C in a skincare product, and these days it's pretty common. The problem is it's the wrong kind. It's the cheap kind. It's the kind that doesn't work. It's the kind that's unstable. It's called ascorbic acid, and if you see it in your skincare product, Hopefully you're not paying a lot of money, and if you really, really want ascorbic acid, go to the vitamin store, go on the internet, order ascorbic acid, and make your own darn ascorbic acid cream or ascorbic acid solution. It's so nasty and rude when a skincare company tries to sell you something that costs a penny for $100 and doesn't even work. That's, the, that's basically what, it is, what the situation is with ascorbic acid in a skincare product. If you look for fatty vitamin C, there's different kinds. There's two major kinds, actually. Ascorbyl palmitate. Ascorbyl palmitate is not going to be found in very many products because it's so hard to work with. Many years ago, I figured out how to create a product with high concentration of ascorbyl palmitate, which you're not going to see it in a lot of products, but it's super duper effective. A little bit pricey because it's so hard to work with. And then there's the deluxe fatty vitamin C, and that's the kind I'm using in my truth treatment products. That's called ascorbyl tetra, meaning four tetra iso palmitate. It has four palmitates. Instead of ascorbyl palmitate, you got four times the fat, four times the fatty molecule. And that makes it ultra effective. And I am talking ultra, ultra effective. I've been using it for over 30 years now on myself. That's how I came up with the truth treatment products, by the way. These are products I've been making for myself. When I was working for Blistex, I started off my skincare career, if you will, working for the Blistex Corporation. I was a, I was the research, I was Tony Jones, the guy who invented the stuff. I was his research assistant for four years when I was in pharmacy school. And I, I would make the Blistex, I made so much Blistex, oh my God, I made pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds, probably half a ton of Blistex uh, in the laboratory over the course of three and a half, four years of working. Anyway, I, I would make the stuff and 95% of the Blistex wasn't, 98%, 99% of the Blistex wasn't even active. It was the wax and the water and the preservative and the filler. And so when I got a little blemish or got something, my lips were dry, I would go get the active material and I'd put it on straight. I didn't need the wax and the, and the filler and the preservative and the fragrance. And I just needed the active material. So I started using active material on my skin. I forget all that other crapola. And one of the most important and powerful of the active materials that I was using on my skin was vitamin C. And I put a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of uh, stuff in there to make it penetrate a little better, transdermal penetration ingredients, maybe a 1% or so of that. You know, a few different things, but mostly active material, and that's all I've been using for 30 years. And then I decided to start selling it. That's what the Truth Treatment products are. Truth Serum, Truth, uh, Truth Balm, Truth Night Balm, Omega-6 Healing Cream, and also uh, our Retinol Gel. I wanted my other company to to be that way, but because of business reasons, business people weren't, business people aren't hip to this concept that I have of selling active materials, only active materials, because it's expensive. And business people don't like spending money on their products. It's all about profit margin in business. But I'm a therapist, as a healthcare therapist. My concern was creating good products, and my concern was changing this quality of the skin. Anyway, look for topical, uh, if you're looking for topical vitamin C, look for ascorbyl palmitate, or even better, ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate. And if you want to check out some products made with those ingredients, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, on our next episode, we'll talk about the stress aspect or the anti-stress aspect of vitamin C. And then we'll talk about a couple other really cool anti-hyperpigmentation ingredients and anti-hyperpigmentation strategies, including skin peels, chemical exfoliation. This is another very important strategy, not just for keeping your skin pigment even, but also for accelerating and enhancing the production of anti-wrinkle fibers and of moisture factors. So using skin peels or using uh, skin peeling agents, exfoli exfoliating agents will allow you to address all three points, all, all three uh, 
uh, points that we're looking for when it comes to healthy skin. Pigmentation, thickness of the skin, as well as the softness and the moisturization of the skin. We'll do all that in the coming days as we continue talking skin health, hyperpigmentation, and more on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Nancy in Tennessee, welcome. What's up? Hi. Um, my daughter is pregnant, and this may go along with some of what you're talking about. She's Congratulations. Around, oh, thank you. She's two weeks away. Okay. Um, but oh, she's got God. a little swelling in her feet, but she's also got some pigmentation on her skin, brown okay. patches. Now um, you know what it's caused by. If you, you've been listening, have you been listening the last couple of days, <laughs> weeks? Yeah. Like, now you know, right? Well, so, I'm thinking vitamin C, and I actually haven't been listening for a while. Um, but where you been? Thinking, Nancy? I know. <laughs> well, we don't get you here live. Oh, no. Did they we took us to, off? Did they take us so off have, the air? I have to go to archives. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. And, uh, well, here's the deal. You want some help with the, with the skin, or you want some help with the feet, or what, with the uh, baby? Both. Okay. Both well, I hope, you're, I hope she's taking iodine, by the way. Well, I was, that was another one of my questions. None of us have salt, iodide salt. We're all taking, you know, good, healthy salt. But are we getting enough iodine? No, you're not, probably. Mm -hmm. This okay. is I was just, funny you should mention this. Just today, I just read this article here. I'm trying to find it as I'm talking to you. This is from Acta Obstetrica et Gynecologica Scandinavica. That's the Journal of the Nordic Federation of Societies of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And apparently... Uh, Swedish women, anyway, probably here as well, uh, are not getting enough iodine, and according to this article, anyway, proper iodine nutrition is necessary for neurological development of the fetus. It's also very important for mom, too, especially for the breasts and for the reproductive glands. So iodine is extremely, extremely important, not just for thyroid hormone, that's what everybody thinks of, but it's important for all of the glands of the body, and it's important for the development of the baby's brain and neurology. So no, you're not going to get, in my opinion, you're not going to get enough from iodized salt. Uh, you know, I shouldn't say that. You may get enough from iodine salt, but why take a chance? Go get yourself some Lugols or go get that nascent iodine from, uh, that uh, Alex Jones talks about all the time, Dr. Group made up, whatever it is. Get, uh, uh, there's lots of ways to get iodine. Iodorol, uh, I use Iodorol. There's a lot of different forms of iodine. Seafood is also a good source of iodine. And seafood will also give uh, mom omega-3 fatty acids, and that's the second important nutrient. Uh, so seafood's perfect in the sense that you're getting the two most important nutrients for building a baby, omega-3 fats and iodine. Uh, hang tight, Nancy. I've got to take a break. Can you stick, stick with us? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thanks for calling. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. On the bright side, from uh, the American Academy of Dermatology, psoriasis patients at higher risk for arrhythmia. If you have psoriasis, you're at high risk for heart disease. Why? Because it's all the same thing. Arrhythmia is a sign of a body or a specifically a heart in distress. Psoriasis is a sign of skin in distress. There's only one thing that goes wrong in the body, and that is burden and distress. So if you got psoriasis, you're at higher risk for arrhythmias and probably lots of other things as well, too. All right, Nancy in Tennessee. We're talking about, uh, about your daughter. Congratulations. First, first grandbaby, Nancy? Well, no, she has grandbaby Ben who's been having some skin issues. I've talked with you before about... Okay. Oh. Um, I vaguely remember, actually, now that you mention it. Right. All right let's, talk, let's talk about this new, okay. the, the new, your new uh, arrival. You said two weeks away? Two weeks, yes. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's awesome. All right. So, first of all, um, you want to, you want to have, can she, can she walk up and down stairs or anything like that? Move her body around. You really want to get that circulation going. I don't like the idea that her, the blood is, the fluid is starting to leak out and she, her feet are swelling. That's a circulatory issue and it's not, it's not good for your mom, mom or it's not good for the baby either. So you really want to get that circulation moving. Anything you could do to improve circulation, even just walking fast, not just walking, but walking fast or even just walking if that's all she can do. Um, so that's, that's first of all, you want to improve the circulatory, the movement of fluid through the circulatory system. Then the second thing you were talking about, uh, we we're talking about supplements uh, for the baby, iodine and omega-3 fatty acids. You get those from fish or you can get them from the Healthy Start Pack. Um, if you want to throw in a little extra iodine, go get some iodorol. Uh, and omega threes, uh, you'll get those in the healthy in the uh, ultimate EFAs that are part of the healthy start pack. And fish is a good source of omega threes. Flax seeds can also be helpful as a good source of omega th uh, uh, omega threes. And also chia seeds. Have you heard of those chia seeds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Do you ever make chia pudding? Yeah, I love chia, it. <laughs> I love it too. It's awesome. Do you ever use coconut milk with it? Have you done that? I use coconut water. 
almond milk, but I have not used coconut water. Try some coconut water. or Almond milk is good, too. You can mix them up. Now they have cashew cashew milk, I've seen, in the health food stores. It's made with straight cashew. But anyway, cashew milk, almond milk, coconut water with chia seeds. It's super delicious and also a good source of omega-3s for 